Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. I'm Jacinta Obiogo. Following the ill-fated military plane crash which killed the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru and 10 others, reactions have been trailing the incidents of crashes in recent times. The development happened when Nigerians were looking forward to new strategies that the new service chief would introduce in the fight against insurgency. In this report, a uh, chronicle of some of the incident with a view to uh, forestalling future occurrences. In 2021 alone, Nigeria has experienced three plane crashes associated with the military. One was on February 27 when seven Air Force officers died when a military jet reported engine failure and crashed near the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. On March 31, another military jet involved in the anti-terror war against Boko Haram in the country's northeastern state of Burunu reportedly lost contact with the radar. The recent one claimed 11 crew on board on Friday, May 21. These sad events have raised questions on the possible gaps that could have caused the plane crashes. Uh, we have a lot of young pilots. Um, they've been well trained and they have acquired the skills to operate the aircraft, preferably out there under normal conditions. But you see, when it comes to operating aircraft under abnormal conditions, bad weather, um, problems with the engine or whatever, it takes a little more skill, experience, learning from either your mistakes or mistakes of your superiors to know how to handle those situations. So it depends on the type of weather conditions they met there. Um, maybe a Mao Masha person would have said that, let's just go back to Abuja, or they had 12, that's why the actual bond so well. So hey, maybe we'll just go to Kano, and then we'll come back in an hour. And really, knowledge of Nigeria and the kind of weather conditions we have all over the place. You hardly have a bad weather condition that lasts for more than an hour. Because this is a crash too many. This is the, 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 whole, um, uh, 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 the whole world is looking at the military that it's impossible that the military is not able to operate, the Air Force is not able to operate, uh, they do their operation in line with how they should be done. Opinions from some quarters are that the crashes were sabotaged, even as the recent crash was reportedly due to inclement weather. A spokesperson for the Accident and Investigations Bureau says it's mere speculation that should be ignored since investigations are still ongoing. Whenever there's an accident, yes, there are speculations. People will say this, people will say that. So we have just started, we have just commenced the investigation. We are, we are still gathering uh, facts and uh, evidences there and there, you know, to be able to do a thorough analysis and then come up with a um, uh, process of that uh, event. Is climate weather or inclement weather is a mere speculation for now. As far as evidence investigation is, uh, is concerned, it's just uh, Speculation. Observers say the sequence of occurrence raises a red flag to warrant new precautionary measures to avert more disasters, especially as the rainy season sets in. While we sympathize with the families of the victims, there are also opinions that there is need for a review of the military aviation sector for safer skies. Away from the sad incident and now to the lingering issue of open grazing and its ban. Recently, 17 governors from southern Nigeria had met and resolved to ban the practice of movement of cattle by foot in the region following rampant cases of kidnappings and killings traced to criminal elements amongst headers. 
Presidential spokesman Gabashe, who has reacted and frowned at the decision. Legal practitioner reacting says the Nigerian constitution does not guarantee freedom of movement of cows. Destiny Momo tells us more on this. Public analysts and legal practitioners have been commenting on the legality of the stance of the governors and presidency on open grazing ban in Nigeria. They express different ideologies on how this sensitive topic should be addressed. But Section 41 of the Constitution, while it allows the fundamental human rights to every Nigerian to freedom of movement, does not give cows the freedom of movement. Human rights is not animal rights, according to our Constitution. And the governors have told that line. How do we now express to them that, look, if you stay in one place, you can enjoy the full uh, value chain of this your cattle, whether it's going to be the height and skin, whether it's going to be the beef that is going to be properly treated, whether it's going to be the feces that we can collect and turn to ammonia gas for to generate power, whether it's going to be the, the, the milk that we can actually set up dairy farms so that we can ensure that uh, the best is being achieved from the exercise. I would have expected that these governors would look at it and say, ah, since we are, not, we are unable to raise IGR for our people and pay salaries, this is not a bad venture that we can invest in. President Mamadou Buhari has approved the rehabilitation of grazing reserves across the country as from June to cop the bloody clashes between headers and farmers across the country. These experts suggest ways to approach this. What I would want from the federal government is to have a formidable information ministry that would communicate with a population of, of an, an Nigerian population that has like 80% of itself below the age of 4, 35. In other words, that means we would have to create uh, uh, avenues that would have to engage people physically and let them understand where it hurts the most. The federal government, with the preponderance of people from the northern part of the country in the security apparatus, must not be prejudiced. They must not be extremists or hypocritical in the practical solution to the problem of grazing, cow herders, and security of lives and property of Nigeria. The citizens of the southern states, like all citizens of Nigeria, may have a right to expect their elected leaders and representatives to find answers to challenges of governance and rights and not to wash their hands off hard choice. But are the experts thinking along this path? For me, I support what they said. However, how they went about it is something I do not support. The first thing Governor Akere Dulu said when he was speaking is, uh, we want unity in this country. You want unity in this country, but you have actually said the southern governors are sitting down. Why can't you say governors have sat down? Despite the varied opinion on the open grazing ban, actual work for the actualization of the modern reserve system in a few of the consenting states should take off in June. Destin Mama for Plus TV Africa. While well, Nigeria will only exist and thrive on the terms agreed by all its constituent nationalities. Minister of Transportation Rotemi Amici says he is ready to listen, learn and implement what the private sector brings to the table to make the sector viable. The minister stated this during a webinar organized by International Facility Services in celebration of the World Facility Management Day. Again, Plus TV Africa's correspondent, Destiny Momo, has more on this. The webinar, which centered on preservation of public infrastructure with specific attention to rail and port, Minister of Transportation Rutimi Amechi says currently there is no budget allocation to fund maintenance of these national assets, arguing that absence of this increases the cost of doing business. You can't talk about maintenance if you don't talk about organization. The reason why there is no maintenance is because there are no consequences. And maintenance, absence of maintenance, increases the cost of doing business. Most of the speakers highlight poor maintenance culture as the bane of dilapidated infrastructure all across the country, saying it requires commitment from both government and private sector to speak out against some saboteurs stealing real bars or any public infrastructure. Others say... It is not right for government to do everything as private sector maintenance is required. The true position is very simple. Remember, in Nigeria, I remember when we were kids, 
the public work department is an integral part of the ministries of works in Nigeria. It's still there, to the best of my knowledge. And what happens then? If there is a problem, they fix the roads. And that must have come from a maintenance budget. And yet I don't do one little bit of maintenance. I have no maintenance engineers. I don't spend any money on maintenance. Instead, I have a very smart contract with the private sector to design and build and operate and ultimately transfer fully maintained rail assets. This is obviously all about industrialization. If we want to maintain our assets, if we want to build them even adequately, we need to industrialize. And again, that ties into a need for private sector participation to increase um, tenfold from where we are now. Rotimi Amechi says opportunity was given to the private sector to partner with building hotels and malls and terminals, but nobody showed up. In response, the minister says he is ready to listen, learn and implement the productivity of the private sector. Last why is there no that beyond the issue of what is going There are no budgets for maintenance. I've never seen the budget of Nigeria. Since I became a minister, I've not seen which exempt me from it. But even at local, I didn't see where we provide the money for, for maintenance. I can argue in the Ministry of Transport that I have an omnibus budget on the railway that says this railway to railway to railway to and ends with an order railway project. Stakeholders here all agree that it is important to build a national consciousness in maintaining assets. Only when this approach is adopted, the discussants and other participants may have to retable this discourse again. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. While lack of maintenance culture has negatively affected infrastructural development, which is critical to a nation's development. Over now to Adamawa State. The State Police Command has arrested 52 suspected criminals, recovered firearms, drug worth million of Naira. The Police Commissioner Aliyu Adamu announced this at the command headquarters where he said the police under his watch will not relent in curbing all forms of criminality. Details in this report. This is not the first time Adama State Police Command has recorded this kind of success in the state capital, thereby sending serious signal to the criminals hiding in the state. The police commissioner said they will continue to fight against insecurity, hence the need for the general public to always give the police their maximum support and cooperation. The operatives of the command have arrested 52 suspects who are members of various criminal gangs and networking groups across the state. The arrest which was carried out by anti-kidnapping anti units, anti shiller squad, the State Intelligence Bureau of the Command, following the successful follow-up on cases bordering on kidnapping, armed robbery, and other uh, heinous crimes, such as rapes. A total number of 20 prohibited firearms were recovered, with 1,000 rounds of live ammunition. The police commissioner appreciates the cooperation of members of the public for their continued support in ensuring safety and security in the state. He assured the general public that the police will not take lightly with the criminal element, as the police will make sure they face the full wrath of the law. In the course of our sustained onslaught on crime and criminality in the command, the command was able to make a very good recovery of some uh, substances uh, which include a India hem uh, solution uh, substances from those criminals and those criminals uh, were arrested some of them are having criminal cases as well as being in possession of these dangerous uh, drugs uh, from much to date the command embarked on the reading of such places and uh, uh, hideout which led to the recovery of 50.70 kilogram of wheat, suspected to be Indian hem, a large quantity of diazepam, tramadol, rubber solution and exo, and other hard drugs. 
Social commentators say, by these achievements, the people in the affected community will now go about their normal businesses as most of the kidnappers and armed robbers were arrested. A job well done by Adamawa State Police Command as they keep up with the fight against insecurity. You're watching Plus Report. There is more after this break. <laughs> 